Number 13, last but not least, if I'm not mistaken, we have Sion hits golf balls into the air. Each time she hits a ball, she records theta, the angle at which the ball is launched into the air, and L, the horizontal distance in meters, which the ball travels from the point of contact to the first time it lands. The diagram below represents this information. There it is. Sion anal analyzes her results and concludes that. I don't know how she did that, but she a genius. See? So they're giving us the derivative see, of the angle. So let's see. Determine whether the graph of L against theta is increasing or decreasing at theta equals 50. See? Now, an important thing to understand is that when you take the derivative of something, you are now in the world of rate of change. So if your rate of change is positive, um, your derivative is positive. For example, this point here. See, if your rate of change is equal to zero, cierto, you would be talking about this maximum here, this maximum here, this maximum here. That's also why you equal to zero for maximizing. See, and so we need to take this uh, formula that they gave us, cierto, and see if it's increasing or decreasing at fifty. So if it's a positive value, it's increasing. If it's negative value, it's decreasing. Pretty straight, straightforward. See, so I'm going to take a dl divided by d theta equals negative 0 0.2 times 50 plus 9. So negative 2 times 50, what the hell is that? Negative 0 0.2 times 50, apologize. Gives me negative 9, negative 10, sorry, plus 9, negative 1. See? So negative 10 plus 9, negative 1. So this guy, this negative 1, is negative, ¿cierto? It is less than 0, which means that at A, it is decreasing. That is how you do part A, see? Then we have that Sion observes that when the angle is 40 degrees, the ball will travel horizontal distance of 205.5. Find an extraction of the function L, L theta, see? Okay, so the tough part here is um, understanding what the heck to do, see? And so the intuition, the best intuition I can give is that this DL over D theta actually came from this. Cierto? So what you did is that you took this guy, you did derivative and got this. The next step to have in mind is that if you take this guy and you do the integ integral, see, you end up with the original one. See? And so you need to do the integral of this guy here. Theta plus 9. So if you do the integral of this, you're going to end up with your original bad boy. Is that it? That is the plan. See? So a couple of things. Since we're talking about the integral of an exponent, ¿cierto? what exponents do I have here? Well, this theta is to the power of 1. See? And so clearly, my past exponent, which had to have been 2, because in the derivative of exponent, you do minus 1. ¿cierto? My original must have had a 2 up there. That 2 multiplied something in front that gave me negative 0.20. So that 2 multiplied something that gave me negative 0.20. I can write it out like this, and I'll get the answer. You can also do it intuitively, but if you want to get fancy, this is how you would do it. Negative 0.2 divided by 2, negative 0.1, see? So negative 0.1 is what was originally in front of the theta. That is... Um, my first term, ¿cierto? Now, what about the 9? The 9 is alone, there's no theta next to it. But, in a derivative, if you have a constant lying around, after you do the derivative, after you do the derivative, then a variable must have been next to it. See? For example, 9 theta. Because when you do the derivative of this, ¿cierto? The theta goes away. That's pretty much it. And lastly, because it's an integral, you have to do plus c. You absolutely have to put plus c. Plus c is a constant. Because there could have been a secret constant here that we do not know about that disappeared with a derivative. See, So that is why we put plus c. The biggest thing is understanding like um, how to do the derivative backwards. If you understand well derivative, derivative, derivatives, just do it backwards, and that's the integral. You're good to go. See, But anyways, um, we have this. ¿cierto? And now it makes sense 
that they give us this information here that sine observes that sine observes that when the angle is 40 degrees cierto? the ball will travel a horizontal distance of 205.5 that's telling you that when we plug in 205.5 for the distance we will have a theta of 40 see and this is actually a set of points cierto? so that set of points we're going to plug in down here and so we're going to have that the distance, which we said was 205.5, so 205.5 equals negative 0 0.10 theta, which we said was 40, squared plus 9 times 40 plus c. See? We're doing this to get the value of c. Once we get the value of c, we're done. So let's get c alone. See? Let's let our numbers play around for a little bit, let them dance. We have that negative 10. Sorry, the negative point 0.10 times 40 squared would be negative 160. This is being this la la. We add 9 times 40, which we know is 360 plus c. Mm -hmm. So 25.5 equals 200 plus c. C has to be 5.5 because we do minus 200 to both sides, see? All right, so C is 5.5. That means that my original function is negative 0.1 theta squared plus 9 theta plus the C that I put earlier, 5.5, see? So again, we have to do this in order to get the C and fill in our function as it is, see? Cool beans. That is how we solve this last exercise over here, number 13.